Hi, good afternoon and welcome to this webinar on Composite and the CMDB add-on, the Composite Material Properties Database. My name is Lorenzo Bossi, I'm the Sales and Marketing Manager here at Composite and joining me today is uh, Jonathan Evans, our Application Engineer. Hello everyone. So today we plan the session to last uh, just under the hour, uh, that will be including time for question and answers at the end of the webinar. But should you have um, questions during the presentation, please do not hesitate to post them as they come in. Um, you can access the question panel, which is on the right-hand side of your screen of the um, GoToWebinar interface. So, um, our objectives for today's webinar will be the following. Firstly, we would like to introduce Composite. For those of you who are not yet familiar with uh, who we are and uh, what we do, uh, during the webinar, we will also be discussing the importance of having uh, reliable materials for composite design and also highlighting the value of uh, having a consolidated set of material properties. Uh, finally, we'll provide an overview of composite CMTB, so the models for the materials management and also specifically the add-on library, uh, which is the object of today's webinar. We'll also provide uh, pricing and availability of the module. The agenda reflects pretty much uh, the aim and objectives of this webinar, so we'll just start with a few minutes introducing the composite, but then uh, jump right into the subject of the composite materials. Uh, in conclusion, we'll provide a clear breakdown of all the materials which are included as part of the CMDB add-on, uh, along with pricing and availability. Okay, so John, uh, Oh, sorry. We'll, uh, we'll start with an introduction to Composite. Um, so, Composite is uh, both the name of the company, uh, but also the name of the software product. Uh, the software was launched commercially in early 2015, following uh, just about five years of research and development. Um, the launch had quite a good success within the industry, um, to the point that by end of March um, last year, so 2015, uh, we already had 50 registered companies and uh, we exceeded uh, 100 companies by the end of the year. Now, it may not seem much, but it's quite a result uh, for the first year, for us, particularly for an engineering software, uh, given the size of the composite industry and the actors playing in it. Um, to give you an idea of the scope of the number, that means uh, our clients have carried on more than 75,000 finite element calculations to date. Um, sorry, on, on the first year, uh, well, to date, uh, we are much closer to the 150,000 mark. Composite was developed by composite engineers and software developers, uh, primarily to answer the need for a practical, efficient, and composite-focused software, which was able to cover the entire product development cycle. Uh, I'll provide you with an overview of the platform in a few minutes. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to highlight that um, our clients have requested, um, basically requested us to answer another typical challenge of working with composites, which is that of an access to reliable material properties that are fit for design and FEA. This is what led us to the release of the CMDB add-on library, uh, which will be introduced shortly. So, in regards to composite, um, what, we, what we integrate is, um, is an approach that covers material plies, material implies, laminates, um, 2D design and analysis, 3D models and FEA, um, alongside with bomb generation or below materials. Uh, the system is uh, very much fully integrated, so designers can create materials and plies and jump straight into 3D models or can replace materials uh, and recreate a bill of materials at the end. The software suite is composites focused with uh, specific aspects covering the material properties and the micromechanics, um, models for extended classical laminate theory and uh, composite specific FEA solver down to the key requirements of uh, pricing and building with composites, so including a detailed uh, bill of materials their fibers, plies, cores, um, and uh, laminate tables for manufacturing drawings. The system allows for a number of workflows to be uh, included. So we have 
first and foremost an agile design workflow. This allows multiple users to be connected within the platform and working um, concurrently within the same project. Um, API commands alongside with import and export, as you will see later on, uh, allows you to integrate Composite within any given um, design environment. Uh, reporting and uh, revisioning of the reports is uh, fully automated and fully integrated. Um, so we don't spend time uh, generating any report. Anything comes out at the click of a button. And finally, integrated wiki pages allows us to maintain an online documentation of the choices or the supporting documentation um, that was used uh, throughout the entire project. Today our focus will be uh, primarily and essentially on the material properties uh, for composite materials. So this is um, an overview of what the composite dashboard looks like. Uh, there are a suite of models that you can see here that cover the entire project development. Uh, that includes project space for project management, CMDB, the composite material uh, database management module, lamina space uh, for, for laminates, um, section FE space are the 2D and 3D um, design environments and FEA solvers. Um, YOTSCAN can templates can are industry specific models, I'll touch a word on that in a minute. Uh, but otherwise, BOMGEN for below material generation, report space to uh, either use the templates um, for the reports provided by Composite or create your own reports um, in a standard uh, way and the dashboard which is a user uh, management platform. So whenever you subscribe to, um, to Composite, um, what we offer is, uh, let's say, a standard suite of modules. I uh, include all the, all the ones highlighted uh, in blue. But we also offer a number of add-ons. Uh, Yotscan and Bladescan are, for example, two add-ons dedicated to industry solutions. Yotscan for scantling of vessels following ISO and GL regulations. Bladescan for uh, tidal and wind turbine um, blade design and analysis. A feeling uh, for uh, links to finite element systems. And um, today the, the add-on that we'll be looking at is the CMDB add-on, um, and particularly the Composite Material Library. Okay, so before we jump into the CMD add CMDB add-on, we'll just give an overview of, uh, of working with composite materials, what it means and what's involved. So designing with composites requires a high degree of integration compared to more conventional materials and construction for steels. Um, this requires a high data quality and the ability to use the data efficiently. So you've got to team up the materials, the process and the engineering all with your, with your design environment and, and your material properties. So what materials shall I use for my application? So, the material palette available to design engineers, you've got fibers, whether it be glass, carbon, um, aramid, <clears throat> you've got resins, epoxies, vinyl esters, polyesters, um, cores, you've got PET, balsa, honeycombs, and adhesives, so pretty much the same as resins. Uh, but the question is, what, what is the best material for my application? Am I going to use glass or carbon? Am I going to use resin, uh, epoxy or polyester with those? So you can see that very quickly it builds up a very large matrix of materials that I could use depending on the cost, the, the performance of, my, of my, my product. And all these materials are processed in different ways. So these materials are driven by application requirements, whether it be performance or cost. And the impact, the impact of the choice of these materials can affect your structure. If we've got a, a highly, highly stressed structure, um, it's got a lot of load, this is going to affect the economics, whether I use a wet laminated glass uh, laminates or I use a, a carbon epoxy pre-break um, product. So how do you know the level of performance for your selected material? And how can you compare between these materials? Um, it's always expensive, so this is down to testing. Um, it always takes long and doesn't always go to plan. So there's always hidden costs and it takes a long time. 
There's a lot of questions that also surrounds testing. So are my results relevant? Um, am I expecting the right results? Um, things like that. So this makes composites very difficult to adopt in some cases when you're making that transition from more classic materials to, to composites. The larger aerospace companies spend millions on, on material testing programs. This data is then post-processed post -processed and, and qualified. But is this the only way? So when we're doing testing, um, there are a lot of questions that come out. So what materials should I test? Um, so if you're unsure, glass or carbon could be used. Um, so you've got seven different fibers or resin matrices, and then you've got to decide which process you're going to use, whether it's wet laminated, resin infused, or resin or pre-break. What properties are really necessary? So there are more than 20 modes of failure on a unidirectional ply for any given process. And some properties cannot be tested, so shear properties. How, how do I get this data to design with? How do I ensure that the testing is representative? So the more tests you do on a material, the better, but also it takes longer and costs more. How do I get access to a material data set that I can use in my FEA, FEA package? Uh, how do my mechanical properties impact the business, my business case for my application? So whether they impact the weight and performance, um, and they're directly linked with the cost of a structure. For a prototype, the material costs are generally re represent up to 20% of the overall cost. For serious applications, maybe 75%. And where can I get my existing material data? Can I trust my manufacturer data, sheet, manufacturer data sheets? So let's go into a quick overview of testing costs. So one material is one combination of fiber, matrix, and processing costs. This is the minimum that you need to start design. So that's 6,500 euros. And that's maybe one month to get the data before you can even start your design. For, 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 for fatigue analysis, this is greater than 45,000 euros, and this is very typical for, for wind and industrial applications. So do I really need to spend thousands of euros before starting my design with composites? There are two ways. On one side, you've got the composite pure players with years of testing experience and in-house databases. On the other hand, companies that are exploring the potential benefits of composite materials. This makes the entry ticket quite expensive. This is where the CMD, the add-on, comes in, making it faster and simpler by making the data sets available. So you may be quite familiar with this, uh, the testing pyramid. So you've got different levels. So you've got coupons, which analyzes your materials and laminates. You've got your elements, so that's your subcomponent testing, your, your beams, your roots, or some webs. And then you've got details, adhesive joints and bushings, and then you've got a full scale test. This, is, this changes depending on the industry. For example, the aerospace industry, you've got uh, lots of tests at each of the individual levels. Um, and a full scale testing is a validation of the design assumptions and design. Um, but as you all know, the aerospace has a huge budget for this, this, uh, this design analysis. On the, other, on the other side, we've got the marine. So the coupon testing is very sparse, and the full-scale test is, is when the boat goes in the water. So you need to make sure that your data that you're using to design with is going to be robust enough, and it's going to be reliable. So this, this is where the CMD of the add-on comes in. It gives you robust data sets that provides reliable foundations for developing your designs. So what data is in the CMD the add-on? The CMD the add-on is a set of character characteristic values derived from testing using statistical analysis. In other words, these are minimum values which a material will have to deliver. You can then apply your own specific industry partial safety factors to derive your project design allowables. This makes it ideal and relevant for anyone using structural composites. All right, thank you. Thank you, John. 
<clears throat> so um, the question really is how can the CMDB add-on reduce the material testing costs? Um, what we compiled together is, uh, is a library of consolidated sets of data that would enable you to quickly and easily start with uh, your projects with composites. And this enables our clients to assess the viability of composite applications as a solution um, to start with instead of investing lots of time and money. So when we look at it from this perspective, material testing becomes a validation rather than a natural investigation. So to introduce um, CMDB, uh, I just want to take a minute to go over the features of CMDB, which is the Materials Database Management Model, um, which I uh, mentioned earlier. This is the one that is included with the composite subscription. Uh, and then we'll be looking specifically into the details of the data uh, alongside with the materials and the properties that are supplied with the CMDB add-on library. So I previously mentioned that when designing with Composite, you do have to pay attention to the materials, the processes, and the engineering concurrently. Um, what you can see here is a bit of a mashup of the different models of Composite with the different aspects of um, this uh, triangular, let's say, selection. So using uh, CMDB, um, what you can do is you can input uh, your, uh, your material, uh, you can input your test data, you can load in your reference materials, um, you can create uh, plies uh, using the micromechanics model that is, uh, that is included in Composite, and you can also create layered materials with laminar space uh, benefiting of the extended uh, classical laminate theory. So, if you, uh, if you remember the, the picture I showed earlier, um, let's look at how we can actually use the CMDB add-on um, in a practical solution. So in CMDB, we, we provide a list of uh, roughly 50 generic uh, materials that are good enough to get you started for most applications. Uh, but if you do have already a number of uh, materials uh, or properties in a database in your company or scattered around Excel files, you can obviously load those from a preformatted Excel into the uh, CMDB model um, and use the centralized material database properties. Um, if you're looking for additional data and you don't want to spend thousands in uh, coupon testing to start with, then the, CB, the CMDB add-on is something you can uh, just simply subscribe to. That will deliver you in excess of uh, 1,200 materials, uh, fully characterized properties, ready to start with your design and analysis. Um, and then you have the option to, um, to also basically export those uh, materials, the plies, uh, but also the laminate properties um, into um, Excel, for example, just looking at the properties themselves. Uh, but you can also export material tables or provide a direct export to FEA tools such as Nastran, Optistract, um, ANSYS, ACP. Um, so that can effectively be a centralized workplace for all your materials. Um, across companies and industries and applications. So specific to the CMDB add-on, we have abilities to provide advanced material post-processing, looking at properties for the calculations, the material selection through scatter plot, for example, um, data comparison and normalization graphs, uh, obviously material data export to Excel, uh, but also work as the uh, centralized database to, um, let's say, high-end nonlinear FEA tools such as ANSYS, NASTRAN, RADIUS, OPTISTRAP, and uh, there are obviously more to come uh, in, the, in the coming months. So how does it work? If, if, if you're not familiar with, um, with Composite, um, what you see when you access the CMDB add-on is basically a list of folders. Uh, that will include uh, all the materials, the CS material library, my company materials, projects, and so on. So what do they mean? The, my company material is what we start with, um, around 50, and you can also import your own material incrementing this database. This is your own private material library and can be used across all projects uh, you have. 
Now, the CS material library is the effectively the CMDB add-on. Um, so you can simply subscribe to it, look at the materials, drag and drop them in your in your company materials, and use them again across uh, all your different projects. Active project materials help you to um, only summarize the materials that are actually used in your in your project. So, uh, for example, if you have a database of a thousand materials, uh, you're not always going to use them in every project. So that helps you to declutter uh, the information you have at hand and uh, helps to navigate more freely um, for all your materials. And finally, you can basically provide uh, sub-selections, um, grouping of materials. In this case, adhesive, carbons, and cores, but we'll show we can do it with uh, materials types or manufacturers or so on later on. So overall, the system allows you to uh, manage your materials in, uh, in a number of libraries, uh, but to also consolidate uh, your, uh, your database uh, for multiple users and multiple projects. Uh, also across a number of diversified locations. So ultimately, uh, the value of material data, um, it, it is clear that material testing is needed, uh, but it is also clear that it is very expensive. Uh, CMDB add-on was developed specifically uh, to save you time and money from testing. We do not pretend to replace testing, but we offer you the opportunity to start designing and selecting your materials uh, before you invest into your coupon testing. As I mentioned earlier, uh, with the composite basis subscription, you can access uh, 64 generic uh, materials. Uh, those are uh, provided as standard to all our customers. Uh, but with CMDB add-on, you actually extend that database with an additional 1,253 that are based on existing data, experience, and testing across hundreds, um, hundreds of projects. Okay, so the CMDB add-on, what do I really get when I, when I buy it? So I get characteristic values. These are materials data which are fit for design. You can go ahead and, and really start analyzing your, your ideas uh, straight away. They're industry proven values across hundreds of projects in uh, marine, wind, tidal, and uh, aerospace. They're full data sets, so they're fit for FEA. As Lorenzo said, you can import them or export them straight into, into whichever FEA software you're using. And transfer, transferable, again, exporting to FEA. So the material groups, we've got fibers, uh, resins, plies, adhesives, metals, woods, plywoods, and cores. There's 1,253 materials, all from different manufacturing types, different combinations of fibers, resins, and creating all these plies. So we've got all these different fiber types and grades. We've got carbon fibers, aramid fibers, glass fibers. Resins, we've got over 10 resins, so epoxy, polyester, up to them all high performance, the, the peak and the bismalamide resins. Adhesives, 11 different material types, and 26 in total, so bonding haste, bonding pastes and it is films. Metals, so this is this is where the industry standards come in. Uh, we have 36 industry, industry standard metals. I'm sure you're all very aware of these from steels, aluminiums, um, irons, titanium, titanium, bronze. All of these materials also have the material data sources and explanations in the, in the material wiki. Woods and plywoods, we've got 34 woods and 26 plywoods. These are all very, very widely used in, uh, from ISO data sheets and test data. And these are all used for design within, uh, within Composite. So cores, this is, this is a huge, a huge range. We've got 212 core materials. Um, there's a wide range of densities and core types are available from honeycombs, uh, foams, and balsa. We also have very specific um, materials in that. So, for example, we have 3A's uh, new T10 foam. That's all in there. We've used it uh, to compare other materials. Foams are slightly different, or cores are slightly different, because they are very specific um, material properties, and we can't, we wouldn't want to keep them um, 
than generic like we have with the flies and the and the um, and the others. So flies, there's no standards in the composite industry. So one material, as I mentioned earlier, that's one test campaign. That's one fiber, one matrix, and one process. As you can see from the ply properties, you've got the fiber type, the fiber grades, the fabric type, the fiber type sizing, um, and that's just the fiber. We've then got to take into account the resin and the manufacturing process. This creates a huge matrix of materials. So we have 890 different plies using glass, carbon, aramid, uh, nine different fiber types, so that's all the different moduli and types of glass and carbon fibers. Seven different fabric types, so unidirectionals, wovens, biaxials, triaxials, um, to mats and stack ups. We have 10 different matrices, matrices, matrices as we said earlier, and eight different manufacturing methods. These are all uh, manufacturing or manufactured independent. So if you have, um, if your supplier is, uh, has a lead time of maybe two weeks, uh, you can go directly to a, a very similar supplier with the same um, product and get that maybe in one week. So this allows you to be independent from your manufacturer and maybe shop around, get a better price, better lead time. So material selection, this is just a, this is what you see in, in Composite and CMDB. So you can very easily compare your material properties. Um, so here we have a stack up. So these are biaxial glasses with uh, chopped around matte glasses. And you can see the range of, of densities and um, tensile moduli. But what if this is not enough? You can create your own plies with PlyGen. So you can input the fiber type, fabric type, your manufacturing process, your resin type, and a reference material for strength. This will then fire out a ply gen material, which is specific for you. So if you already have a material and you want to find out how it's different or how the material properties may be slightly different with a different um, resin, very quick and easy to do just to get a good feel of it. So within CMDB, we have our own nomenclature. Um, so it goes fabric type. Uh, this example is unidirectional. Fiber type, um, carbon. Fiber grade, so high modulus, standard modulus, all the, the, uh, the standard um, nomenclatures. The reinforcement weight, so that's just the weight of the fibers. The matrix type, for this example, epoxy. And then the manufacturing process. So we like to keep the nomenclature very static, uh, so it's very easy for you to understand and compare materials. We also have more complex layouts, so these are called combos, where you have, a, in this example, a, a biaxial glass, 450 gram, which is e-glass, and a chopped gram matte glass with 225 grams, and that's um, epoxy with a hand layout. So as you can see, it's very easy to understand, and all of our materials have the same nomenclature. Okay. Thank you, John. So uh, how is it practically you can actually use Composite and the CMDB add-on? Um, the first example is, uh, you know, providing you are an organization that is new to composites, um, are currently evaluating the advantages of using composites, as a replacement for steel or aluminium structures, if you're looking at higher performances or lower weights, um, using a tool like Composite can help you to uh, import or build your own structures. And since the uh, CMDB add-on includes both composites and metals, as we've seen earlier, you're also able to provide a side-by-side -side comparison of your structures um, in order to generate an initial business case um, without, again, having to um, start sourcing uh, material data through um, coupon testing and having to wait a few um, a few months. The second example is um, if you're an organization that is already working with composites, um, but you'd like to centralize and to store your material properties in a system that is accessible, uh, but also perhaps complement it with additional data. 
So Composite and the CMDB add-on would help you to consolidate and enhance your material data uh, while providing a centralized, secured environment for all users across projects and locations. And um, finally, there are also specific examples, um, like we worked with um, 3 Composites for the development of a dedicated platform um, to the marine industry applications. So it is a specific development of the, um, the, composite, um, the composite suite of models um, that allows you to select, for example, the, um, the size of a boat you would like to have, decide whether it's a, um, um, it's a sail or a motorboat, um, and uh, finally decide a combination of materials that are used in your construction. You have options, for example, in glass PVC, um, glass PET, but as we mentioned earlier, also newer materials, glass titan or carbon titan, um, can also be used to very quickly access uh, weights and uh, performances and, uh, and prices. Um, that was object of an earlier webinar, so there is a YouTube link uh, you can see at the bottom left of the screen um, that is uploaded and um, available uh, for you to review if, um, if you're interested. Okay, so let's look at a, a practical example. We had a few requests from customers in the wind, marine and automotive industries to compare the, the performance of the new T10 phones from 3A Composites and see how it performs with other PET cores. Let's take a look in Composite how we did this. Okay, so this is our Composite environment. Uh, you can see the modules laid out as Lorenzo explained earlier. Uh, if we jump into CMDB, you can see that I have uh, two material selections. So one material selection is cores which are 100 kilos per, per meter cube density and cores which are PET foams from 80 kilos to 120 kilos in density. If I just expand this, uh, the first core, so this is a cores with 100 kilo density, I can select all these materials and compare them directly using um, using the charts or graphs, or I can just check um, using a property scatter plot to see how they perform against each other. So I'm going to use density against uh, longitudinal shear modulus, and you can see that I have uh, my densities here, and I can see directly my, my longitudinal shear modulus and which which phones will outperform my current or or, whether, or how much of a drop in stiffness I get due to using um, another phone. So I can see um, these are all the same density. Let's do the same for, for my PET phones, which is a slightly wider range using uh, larger densities. So let's do the same again, um, property scatter plots. And longitudinal shear modulus. Again, you can see the density ranges and, um, and the longitudinal, longitudinal shear modulus. So very easily you can see which materials you want to use based on your weight and your stiffness requirements. So you can see that this, this was very easy to check the, the added performance that you get from using a T10 foam. I mean, it's important to um we, we can use those tools as a, as a selection and a helpful way to uh, evaluate different options that we have throughout the projects. Um, you know, new materials are, let's say, ready to market uh, pretty much every, every year and, uh, you know, obviously testing, uh, testing has a cost. Um, but it's through those simple tools and those simple comparisons that we can see that perhaps there is uh, a list for, for, for certain projects and certain properties here. Uh, an opportunity to improve um, the performances through, for example, those uh, those new materials. And so, by just plotting those properties and, and others, we can just see whether there are materials that indeed could provide an advantage. Um, there are then functionalities downstream into the composite suite that allows you to, for example, duplicate the project, replace a material entirely or a stack uh, throughout uh, all the structures of your project and um, you're then able to just re-perform and fine-tune the analysis. 
Um, so at the end of the day, what you have is, is a very simple and quick way to uh, evaluate the potential of changing materials with new materials such as the D10 that came out and effectively notice whether they can provide you with a specific advantage compared to um, the materials you were, uh, for example, using previously. Okay, so that was uh, just an example based on uh, well, based on, on actual cases. Um, now let's look at the availability of the CMDB um, add-on module. So Composite CMDB add-on was uh, released live on uh, the Composite platform on seventh seventh uh, of March. Um, so anyone who is, uh, for example, just even subscribing to the free trial of Composite is able to um, just go into CMDB, the CS material library, and you're able to browse basically all of the materials that are included um, in, this, uh, in this library. Uh, you won't be able to access the detailed properties, uh, but you have 50 so materials pre-provided uh, that you're able to basically use to assess uh, the quality of the data we, we provide uh, and then using the nomenclature basically trace down to exactly what is it that um, that we make available. Uh, the CMDB add-on is available as a yearly subscription. Um, as you can see the pricing is uh, well extremely competitive when you think about the amount of data um, that is provided with it. You know, if you're looking at 4,500 euros, that's probably the equivalent of two to three coupon testing. Uh, you can imagine in just one project where you're evaluating five materials and drill it down to one material of choice, uh, you already uh, more than paid back the, uh, this initial subscription price. Uh, current uh, subscribers to Composite can simply upgrade from the dashboard um, itself. Okay, so we now have some time for question and answers. Um, so if any of you has uh, questions, there is a panel uh, or a little icon called questions on the go to webinar interface. You can just type in your questions and uh, we're able to answer those um, live with you for now. But let's see what we have so far. One, well, the <laughs> is the million dollar question which is basically where where is the data that we have in coming from John that's probably best for you well um, the biggest challenge we faced is compiling the manufactured data um, this has been solved by compiling this data to enable supply chain flexibility and and help you to, to choose your material manufacturer now uh, this comes from years of experience within the company and, and years of success, uh, successful projects um, which we have now made available for you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, will you provide regular updates to the CMDB? Um, yeah, I think as, uh, as for, for Composite itself, um, Yes, the platform is, is updated uh, is updated regularly with uh, new materials uh, coming out. I think the, it is the aim to uh, be able to be first to market with good materials data, um, avoiding you the cost and the burdens of uh, testing. So yeah, we will be um, supporting the platform entirely with uh, new materials and uh, properties as they come out. Um, could you send us an example of the data? Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's. Uh, if, if you log into the um, into the free trial of uh, Composite, as I mentioned, you'll be able to see the full uh, the full extent of the materials we we provide. Um, so uh, twelve hundred plus materials are uh, are ready there for you to um, to review. Okay, so we, we have another question. Um, can I have access to the test reports? 
Uh, the data comes from the post-process testing data within within the company. Um, that is what we're making available for you, the post-process data. Um, it's still expected that you'll have to do um, material testing within your design. That's for any projects. Um, where Composite really helps is where is avoiding the testing of, of multiple materials. Mm. Okay. Okay. If there are further questions, uh, please feel free to uh, send them at uh, support at composite.com. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you have any other inquiries about, about the software itself. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, feel free to um, go on to composite.com. There is a link to the free trial, 30 days, fully supported. So uh, John will be, for example, one of the application engineers that can guide you through uh, your initial steps in Composite, help you uh, answer any questions, and uh, yeah, make the best use of your 30 days trial. Otherwise, uh, thank you for your uh, attention and uh, attendance today. Uh, we hope you find uh, this webinar useful. If you missed uh, any of the parts, uh, we'll be updating the webinar on the website. It should be up by, I think, in the coming couple of days. Uh, but you will be notified by email as soon as the recording and the presentation um, are made available on the Composite website. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Goodbye. Thank you.